Welcome to the second edition of the podcast, It's a Mess. We are broadcasting right here from Amp Studios, sponsored by Old Mutual in downtown Johannesburg. My name is Simon Nupisi. I'm not Tosa, so please do not assume that my surname is referring to milk. No. If my name is hard for you to grasp, perhaps you can call me the voice of God. I earned that nickname from a conference call, very interesting conference conference call, I think for obvious reasons. And you can also call me Morgan Freeman on a budget. Yes, Morgan Freeman on a budget. What do you think of that, sir? No, I love it. eh? You love Uh, it? Yeah. Have you watched any Morgan Freeman movies before? Yeah, I have. Uh Um, I think my favorite was Wanted. Wanted? Wanted, yeah. Okay, so as a a guy who's not really into movies, what Mm. was that movie about? Um, Basically, they... I think uh, Angelina Jolie is also there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh So they get this guy yes. who descends from a father who was an uh, assassin. Uh-huh, and then uh-huh. now he has to take over his father's mantle. And now they teach him how to be an assassin and how to actually... They shoot guns with bullets that actually curve. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so, that defies the laws of aerodynamics. Yeah. Speaking of which, there's a law we broke here, and that is my apologies. Introduce yourself. We cannot welcome somebody into your house without having them tell you more about themselves. Sure. So, my brother, let the people know you. Tell okay. us who you are. What are you about? And what brings you here today? Okay, now, uh, I'm Rianete. Rianete. Yeah, Sikabate. From Mutuan. the East. Uh, no, Soto. Soto, okay. Yeah. okay. From the East Rand. Um, and I'm a founder of uh, KOI. Uh, it's the Kingdom of Israel. Uh, we deal with uh, black issues. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're trying to build a black nation, a uh, responsible nation, and um, try to alleviate some of the mm-hmm. social issues mm-hmm. social and ills issues. that yeah. black people face. And uh, the only way to do it, besides uh, giving ideologies and all of that, I think it's we need to be practical and we need to, it has to start with nation building because that's where I feel that uh, as a people we lack. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what I'm about and that's, that's, that's what I focus on. Very interesting. What created or what brought to you this idea? Where did it all start? Kingdom of Israel, because we're in South Africa, right? Yeah. We're in Johannesburg, we're in the CBD. So when you speak of Israel... Right, Israel is a place somewhere in the Middle East. Yes. So, where did this idea come from? Why the Kingdom of Israel, and why on black issues? Okay. Um, because yes. the Kingdom of Israel, the children of Israel are actually black people. Really? Uh, yeah. In the Middle East, black people in the yes. Middle East. Um. All right. So. Yeah. Um. After After seventy A.D. and the Romans destroying the temple, they fled into West Africa. And that's where the diaspora uh, began. So they're better known as the Bantu people. So, um, yeah, uh, that's 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 where the 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 whole kingdom of Israel comes from. So, okay. when did they become white? Should be <laughs> the next question. Well, because that's... because if you tell me that. The people of Israel were black, and we're seeing these Caucasian dudes running around claiming land in Palestine. Mm. How do you t- how do you tell the normal average black person out there who's used to, to seeing Caucasians on the screen where, wherever the Middle East is brought up, and you're here telling me how Ganti were also there in the Middle East? Ganjan, yeah. founders of civilization were right. Africans. Okay. So, in a, in antiquity. Um, 6,000 years ago, from the first civilizations, which were Babylon, which was in the Middle East, it was founded by an Ethiopian guy called Nimrod, uh, son of Kush. So it was in Nineveh. So the whole area of the Middle East was actually populated, or uh, that kingdom was started by Ethiopians. And that is why Ethiopians are known as uh, the cradle of uh, civilization. And from Ethiopia mushroomed the Nubian empires, mushroomed the Egyptian empire, which then became the flower of Africa and one of the greatest uh, empires in Africa. So the whole area of the Middle East was populated by black people in antiquity. And um, later on, uh, through conquest, uh, you started having 
Iranians who were called uh, Persians and uh, Chaldeans who were the other Babylonians who now started mm -hmm. invading and conquering the lands and uh, that pushed black people back into their homeland, which is Africa. So that is why today that place is populated by Arabs. But not only that, but it's also because of the uh, Ottoman empires. So, yeah, um, given that black people were the founders of civilization, it is not, it's not a mystery that they were the first to teach the world to write and all of that. But what happened is all of that was was changed and it was it was education taught us that okay. you guys did not do this we did this so now the next question that follows is i am the average black man picture me as the average black man right i am hustling on the streets of johannesburg mm. i've just been mugged mm. there's a para who's just taken my phone because all he wanted was two bucks mm. Right. And now I don't have a phone anymore. I don't have my pants on anymore mm. because I'm wearing something that's not even expensive, but he's going to probably go and sell it for the next fix. So you tell me that my ancestors, because I have my own reservations about that. So you sure. tell me my ancestors were the founders of civilization, Ganjani, because how did we go from building empires to struggling to find ourselves a plate of food to eat? How does, how does this work? That what has, do you think happened? Yes, that has been the last five hundred years. Okay, um, where now Europe started conquest and uh, imperialism and colonization began, and um, it's gonna come to the basic of when we lost land, when the world declared war on Africa, and uh, West Africans were taken and they were put in slave ships, and today we have them as black Americans, Jamaicans, uh, black Europeans, because they were taken through the transatlantic uh, slave trade. But not only the transatlantic slave trade, but also the Indian uh, slave trade, right. whereby the Arabs were also involved. Right. So when kin African kingdoms were, 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 were destroyed, black people started migrating. And that's how black people got to South Africa, by the way. Because originally in South Africa, we all know that the San people and the Khoi people were all the right. first people here. All right. That all is right. why uh, I think it was last year or something. Okay. The, the, the Khoi San were at the union buildings saying to President Ramaphosa that... Uh, I recall that protest. Yes, if, I recall it very If well. you guys it are going to start speaking news. about land yes. in South Africa, yes. we are the first people to, 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 to settle in South Africa. To occupy this land. So then the question is, where do... Bantus come from then? Because if they were the first people to settle here, where do we come from? The, the thing is, the thing is, you're looking at what you just said, what you just mentioned about colonization and imperialism. So now, if, let's say, black people are the founders of civilization, right? Mm -hmm. it means that we, our ancestors, because I, I, like I've mentioned before, I have my own reservations about this. Sure. There's something that's not quite right. There's something that is fishy, sure. something that is bitting the waters. Sure. Yes. So, you are the founders of civilization. It means you have all the smarts. Mm. You have all the intelligence. Mm. Don't you think that perhaps we might not be as intelligent as we assume us, ourselves to be? Because how do you go from building pyramids? You go from building walls. Because I'm sure you know about the the Benin kingdom mm. of the, those walls. I read about it recently. Apparently those walls were of a branch of mathematics that was sure. never even known by the Western sure. world. So I know all the things you're talking about. Of course, this is for the people out there, mm. okay? And people might rubbish what you're saying as hotepism. You're mm. familiar with that, right? Yes, I am. There are chakra hands mm. and hoteps mm. who are always referencing ancient Egypt mm. as the birthplace of civilization, right? You ask them, where are your ancestors from? And they just tell you, we were kings and mm. stuff like that. No. How do we go from kings to peasants? I think... If you study history, you will, you will find that um, everything has a cycle. Okay. If you go to Greece right now, yeah, yeah. Greece is one of the most poorest countries in, Euro in, in, in Europe. Uh, they went through a depression just a few years ago. Now, if I say to you that Greece ruled the world once upon a time, and you look at the Greek people, would you believe it? 
or if we went to Afghanistan or Iraq and they were the Babylonians of the time and we said they ruled the, the, the world at one point and Europeans lived in caves uh, just a few years ago. Would you believe that looking at Europeans that they were just cavemen and they didn't even cook their food, they did not even bury their dead? So this thing happens in cycles. Um, what generates those cycles? I think in every race, yes, great men arise, right, right, right. and they become leaders. Okay, and they lead their people to 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 certain mindsets. Um, they generate consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So, I mean, look at. Here in South Africa, we have tribes, right? Nations. I, I, I believe that the term tribe, that's just a personal conviction, yeah. by the way. The word tribe is very minimalistic. Okay. Yeah, so let's go with nations. Nations. Because I've never heard anybody say the Zulu tribe. It's always yes, the Zulu, Zulu nation. nation. Botswana but then, has its own nation. But yes. then the question is, when did, when did the coming of the Zulu nation be? You see, because before Shaga Zulu, mm -hmm. Ntetwa did not call himself a Zulu. He called himself a... You mean Uting is why Uting is why Uting is why yes. yes. Did he not call himself Uting uh, yes. Yes, because he ruled over the Zulu Zulu people. Yeah, he was at war with Uzwito of the Ndwandu. Yeah. Exactly. Very common history, sure. lovely history. Yeah, now, say, yes. if Shaga and the Zulu people were under the Mtwetwa uh, Confederacy, how is it that today Abaga Mtwetwa are calling themselves Zulus? And this is true with the Kosa Nation. It's true with the Sutu Nation. It's true. It's true with the Bedi Nation. So. A great man called Shaga came through mm -hmm. and he conquered the other clans because th the same names that we bear come from the houses, the different houses we have. Mm -hmm. And then one mm -hmm. great house comes about, like the Zulu house. Yeah, that was led by U Senzangakwana Gachama. Gacha, yeah. yeah. But then Senzangakwana was not. <clears throat> Senzangakwana was. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that history yeah. because, oh, sends a corner. Of course, you're here to answer the questions, but sure. I feel like wherever I can, sure. I should also drop some pearls of sure. knowledge. So, sends a corner was the chief, yes. a paramount chief yes. of his clan, which was named the Zulu. Yes. Because he came from, oh, sends a corner, Gachama, yeah. Uchamagama Keba. Yeah. No, Uchamagandaba, pardon me, and then Undabagama Keba. Mm. So, this was, oh, sends a corner was focused within the Zulu, mm. the people who bore the Zulu name. Who, oh, today we'll say the Zulu same name. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But yes. now, the whole the whole of Kwazulu Natal today, all of them are known as Zulus. Even Aban Paga Kurumalo, even Aban Paga Zwite. Uh -huh. But Zwite was at war with the Zulu nation. Now, had Zwite won that war, we would be calling them Aban Paga and not the Zulu people. So I'm trying to say, Uguti, yeah. nations come about because of leadership. And you find people who come once in a lifetime and they they bring people together or the or, or the different clans together and then they make them into a nation like you said that let's not call them clans or tribes mm -hmm. let's rather call them nations mm -hmm. so that that's what ushaga did yeah, yeah he yeah. made them he, these different clans all around kwazulu natal he conquered them and then made them into a nation same with uh uh king Mshash, because he's the one who founded the Sutu nation so, yeah. to answer your question, then how does this happen? It it, it lies. Uh, everything rises and, and 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 falls on leadership. So, at different times, the Roman Empire was the greatest, and it fell. And it fell, yeah. Uh, yeah. England used to be the, the 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 world superpower, and America took over. So, how is it that black people find themselves in this situation today? Because African kings were bribed by Imperial West. So they would be given guns, given rum and alcohol, and say, go to war with a certain tribe. And then sell us, the slaves of, 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 of the tribe. So that's how the slave trade come up, came about. So in other words, you could also say, because somebody is watching out there and they're listening, mm -hmm. they could also just as well assume that we were sold into slavery because our ancestors were drunkards. They, <laughs> they, 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 they were... How would you respond to that? I would say it's 
it's too basic and 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 and, and how and because ultimately when the europeans came here we ah. already had issues amongst ourselves and amongst different tribes so kind of like how when white people came to south africa we had the infectane wars and causes we fight those cause those caused by a uh, famine yes yeah, yes yeah. yeah, so there's a shortage and of food and now um we were fighting amongst each other uh-huh. and the sutus were fighting the zulus the zulus and the, so while we are fighting one another yes and a a a a a a, a a portrite comes and says, I will give you guns a to defeat. Yeah, a fan yeah. river comes and says, yeah. I'll give you guns to help you defeat uh, the Sutus. And you defeat the Sutus. But now, those are your black brothers. But at that time, because of, tri- and I don't want to say tribalism, but because of... But it does exist, though. It, it does, does exist. It does. But I'm yeah. saying, now, if as black kings, mm-hmm. if they are fighting one another yeah. with the help of white people, yeah, there'll come a time when you have defeated all your neighbors and you no longer have friends. And then the same white person who gave you the guns will now come and defeat you because now you don't have any bullets and he has the guns, he has the bullets. He, he's been funding your wars against your own people. So now he just comes and takes you over and takes over everybody because you, you helped them defeat your own people. So that's, that's basically what happened. So now we go further from that, right? You say that the attitude of, or rather the philosophy of dividing and conquering was developed out of noticing and seizing the opportunity that two brothers are fighting. I don't like using the term brothers and sisters yeah. because I posted recently on Facebook. By the way, Facebook is not the ghetto. I don't know who needs to hear this. Somebody very important needs to hear this. Facebook is not ghetto. Just putting it out there. I'm speaking to no one in particular. Yes. She so, knows herself. She no, knows no, 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 no. Don't know themselves. I'm just saying that <laughs> Facebook is not the ghetto. So I posted on Facebook that we're not all brothers and sisters. Sure. So now this leads to the Why would you say that? Now, I believe that there are certain intricacies mm. existing within cultures. Mm. You are Zulu, perhaps you're Zulu, but you're not required to circumcise. Mm. But you could still be considered a man. Mm. You go to Amakosa, and this is within the Nguni branch, mm. and yet you go to Amakosa, and you need to go to the mountain. You become, you know, my girlfriend is Tosa, so she, she educated me about this. She's a very intelligent mm. person, by the way. Yes, yes, I'm giving my own person a shout out. Mm. Don't edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> so she educated me about this. There are certain terms. Amakosa people are generally smart. Yeah, no, no, she's intelligent. Yeah, no, no, hear me out, she's intelligent, uh, yes. They, they're very talented. We have Biko over there. He knows yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't think we're brothers and sisters. I think there are certain intricacies that we need to take note of because there are certain nations in the African Continent. on the African continent that still practice genital mutilation, mm-hmm. that still practice child marriages. So we cannot go ahead and say that these are our things that this is African tradition. And I think this is what is holding us back mm. because we cannot excuse these traditions because we can see that sleeping with children is wrong on mm. all levels. We cannot tolerate that. Yeah. So this is why I am standing on this mountain. This is a hill mm. to use to engage in the parlance of social media users. This is a hill I am willing to die on. Sure. So now... It is not wrong. I, this is what I think. It is not wrong to assume that black people did this to themselves. No, it's not. It's not. Because we keep blaming, we keep saying, hey, hey, hey white people did this yeah, and white people not. did that. It's not. But we are at war, okay? Mm-hmm. We are at war. We look alike, okay? I know I'm tall, yes, but then... <laughs> yeah, that's why me then, I'll go and say, hey, Jan van Riebeck, uh, hey, that guy, uh, you, you, you know, see he's going to finish me. Uh, precisely, so now, I can't take him on. we are fighting, we're like, okay, we're not directly related, but we, at least there's some sort of camaraderie that should come out of us simply looking like one another. Yeah. And if we, we pay attention to what happened, do we say that we can just blame white people for everything? No. Because white people saw an opportunity sure. and it was capitalized on. Sure. And this is what everybody should pay attention to on. Sure. Now, to move forward, this is linked to what you mentioned about your initiative, mm. Kingdom of Israel. Mm. What are the black issues you are specifically imposed? Or rather, let me say, what are the black issues you are 
immediately intent on focusing on, on trying to alleviate? What are these black issues you want to nullify? What are these black issues you want to see the last of in the black societies, in the townships? Dependency. Okay. Um, and ignorance in terms of how the system really works because we don't even understand township economy. And so because we don't even understand the economy of where we live, then how are we going to capitalize on anything? And if you, do, we do not own our own economy. Right. Everybody who comes to the hood takes over because they see that there's a political naivety and economic naivety with black people. And the sectors that you could say that black people are, um, are thriving in uh, in the township is Amataveni. Shabins, yes. Shabins. Um, saloons, I would say. Salons, yeah. Sa- yeah. But then foreign black women, and I, uh, to me, they 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 one of us. I know South Africa. It's a question to do that But, yeah. I, it, it, that's about it. Uh, oh, in the tax industry, in the tax industry. But right. then you look at every other industry, then you find that we 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 do not have control over the money situation in that in that in that in that in that sphere. So first, we need to start working together in getting the bag and uh, getting our money right, because black people spend a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You that's can why, say that again. Yeah. That's why Chinese will come and start shops there. That's why Arabs will come and start shops in us. Right. And then basically, and it doesn't matter how many times black people loot them. And I'm saying, I'm not saying we should loot them. But I'm saying it doesn't matter how many times we loot them. <laughs> but they stay because yes. they know that there's money here. There's so money. Yeah. how is it that everybody can see that there's money here? And somehow this money seems to escape the community. We don't see yes. it. You don't yes, see it. We it's don't see there. it. So... First and foremost, we need to get our money right, right, and we need to get our mind right. How do we do that? Because we mentioned we've been here joking about the impact that Steve Biko has, and we're talking uh, about Biko. this just, just earlier. <laughs> yeah, we're talking yeah. about this just <laughs> earlier about how Steve Biko targeted the mind and the psychology of sure. a black person, sure. and he revolutionized how yeah. we saw ourselves. Yeah. So now, how do you eradicate this defeatist mentality? How this do you convince the average township oak that he could be more than Umchito Oploma Ekonin, Umalangan, who's waiting to go and hit on a girl who's coming back from school, mm. who's just tired and minding her own mm. business, who is standing there at the corner store hoping for two rand? How do we change that mentality? Because we've a lot of times, many times before, this has been discussed. Sure. And you can go over the cliches that we need a revival, but mm. how do we convince the people? that this revival is required? How do you convince them that this is good for them? Well, first and foremost, it needs to be seen in you. You mm-hmm. see, you have to be an example. I okay. uh, did a lot of things, I'm not going to say here, but... What things? <laughs> uh, my, my guy, no, listen, listen. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's be honest with one another because uh, many a times when we have these conversations, the middle class, the so-called sure. middle class, is often telling the people in the township, get out of the township. Mm. So now the issues are caused by you not being in the township anymore, mm. you not having the privilege or mm. rather the means to discuss what happens in the township. Mm. So you should tell us what you did because maybe there's somebody out there who can relate. Typical Kasi boy. Yeah. Um, Soul dope. Uh, how how how? Ah, you see now. Like, I'm joking. No, relax, <laughs> relax, relax, relax. You sold dope. Yeah, um, ran the streets. Um, so, but then you see a lot of friends die in front of you, mm. and you start saying, "Hey, there's only one one way that this thing ends. It's death or prison." And um, yeah, faith came uh, into my life as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and growing up, you know when parents force you to go to church? Mm, mm, and then when mm. I was 13, I was like, no more. I'm not going to church. Because then yeah. I would have questions. And 
Sunday school, they can't answer. Yeah, like, you're so on top, yeah, and yo, then you yo, ask yo, questions yeah. and they don't, they don't yeah. answer you. And like, yeah. Yeah, and Goliath was a giant. I'm like a giant. Uh, <laughs> and then they can't answer you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, um, he gave me a right what I like. Ah. Yeah, I was, I was 13, 14 at the time. And that was the first book I read. The manuscript, now, yes. Long words. <laughs> I even understand it. And yet, that's the thing about reading. It's yeah, yeah. You might not understand it, but it's it seems like it's in you. Yes. And it it yes. It, it, it it works. I I I can't understand it because I would read it. I mean, I was at fourteen, thirteen. Steve Biko's writings are deep, and they 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 they. So. I would read and I started trying to understand self. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, who are black people? Where do we come from? Self-actualization. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, we were speaking uh, outside there. That yeah. Ultimately, you deviate when you get into your deep teenage years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. say, so say. You start seeing girls, yes. Yeah, yes. and double cherry mm-hmm. and, and all of that. And then you leave it. Yes. And then, life must say, shy ale pambili. Now you get back to yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonji. Yeah. Because, yes, no matter how thick the thighs are, it is better to focus on the thickness of a book. Yes. Something I just came up with. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 hey, they are a distraction. <laughs> no, know, when women thighs, are beautiful, thighs, I wonder. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, then, but yes, black you get back black to women. the... I shout out, I black women. Mm-hmm. I mean, me, you are my favorite. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's focus now on, yeah, you... Fo- you now focus on the thickness of a book. Mm. Yes. Now, how do how do you navigate? How do you tell? <laughs> yeah. So you start questioning, like, yeah. um, so how did white people come and conquer us? Okay, they they they, they worked with the mind. That is why there was banned to education. That is why they they made sure that they beat it into us. That and I'm not like saying, but you are useless. You are useless. You are useless. You are kafirs. You are and they. You are small. You are nothing. You 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 are monkeys. Why did they do that? It's psychological warfare, and that's what Pico is trying to fight. Because how you think of yourself will determine how far you go and how far you will fight your enemy. So, but I do. You are defeated already. If what, what, what does that mean? What does that um, mean? The white man is the black man's medicine. Mm-hmm. So meaning that you are sick, you see, you are already saying, ah, me, I'm sick, I can't do anything without the white man. So then the white man will always rule over you because already you have declared, okay, now I'm sick and I need, I need, I need Sklari, which is, which is, which is, which is the white man. So it used to irritate me to this day that saying irritates me. So it developed into a culture, even if yeah. it, yeah, once it's, it's said in the neck, yeah. it becomes a bit of a culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah so go on, go so, on. So, so yeah, um, it starts with self. So I start questioning, like, how, how, how did they do it? And then you start saying, ah, they used the Bible and the church. And they did. Christians don't want to admit that. Hmm. Like, it feels like you are coming against the church when you just, but it's true. Like, people, come on, like, it's true. And I think this is the depth of this conversation. Yeah. And I think what we need to focus on is the mission mm-hmm. because we need to differentiate, right? There are people out there who are Christians who don't feel like they are mentally oppressed by mm-hmm. Christianity. But then we cannot deny how it came into this continent. I read this very interesting letter mm-hmm. written by King Leopold to the missionaries. Mm-hmm. Remember, King Leopold was at the time in charge of the Congo Free State. Mm-hmm. Now, I think what begs the next question right, is you mentioned psychological warfare mm-hmm. because this is what I think, right? If I tell you that you are nothing, that is my perception of you. Yeah. If you believe that you are nothing, that is your perception of yourself. Yeah. So do we then say that black people are psychologically dilapidated? Is there something lacking in the African psychology that has led us to where we are today? Yes, it's trauma. It's trauma. Um, post-traumatic uh, disorders, um, it's, 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 it's. psychologists will tell you that people who suffer trauma uh, tend to, to, to have low self-esteem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we've been suffering trauma for, for the past 500 years. All right. And um, when you... That is why I'm an artisan, electrical. And I remember uh, I was at a mine in the East Rand, and I grew up in so-called multiracial schools. So white people have been around me all my life. 
But then when you see older people and how they behave around white people, like, dude, stop it. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and yeah. you like, no, don't, don't. You know, you, you're, you're talking hey, about this, here, yes. I'm like, hey, Baba, stop that. I've witnessed this before. Like, <laughs> you go to a shop, right? Yeah, mm. And you're buying and you see this really, like, okay, she's, okay, I can't say the gender. But I think we know what we're talking mm. about. Please edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> and we we go there, right? Let's say you're black and you're there and you're buying whatever it is you're buying, maybe in poo mm. Yes. And you know she just she's chewing a gum plastic. Mm. And you look at her disposition to white uh, a white person, you know, sure. there's a smile. Oh can't this person can smile. Mm. This person is polite. Mm. And that is something I think that is along the lines of what you are yeah. saying, yes. So because we didn't suffer apartheid he did and that is why maybe he sees white people like that but then you ask yourself why do people even our age and who've, who've, who've experienced so-called democracy why do they behave like that but it's it's it still stems from the fact that we know what happened to us and um, we we refuse to deal with it so we feel small because Moya is um, As soon as you get closer to school, it's big houses, it's nicer cars. But then when you come back home, the cars get a little bit older. Yeah. yeah. You're walking home with a goat. You don't know where this exactly. goat is coming so, from. Yes, yes, yes. Your environment and their environment it's already tells different. you yeah, that yeah, yeah. we are not the same. So, black people, we have this. Um, yeah, it's 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 almost in us that um, we are inferior. But we were told we were inferior, so we need to first deal with that. And when you start studying scriptures, then you start seeing, oh my goodness, no, it's been a lie. Like uh, the Bible was used. <laughs> You've been lied to, black child. Yes, yes. yes. I've also been through that. Go yeah, on. Yeah. So it's been a lie. And hey, we wrote the Bible. Hey. We taught them maths. We taught them, uh, and you start reading these Greek philosophers, and they themselves say, "We went to Egypt to learn, and it was black men with nappy hair." And all of them keep we we learn. So, and now it's the Pythagoras theorem. No, it's not the Pythagoras theorem. He learned it in Egypt. Mm, but the thing is, okay, the thing is, I think this is the central point. This is the central point. That now we know where we are, mm. right? We know where we are. We know how we've come to be, as you so eloquently put it, mm. that there has been continued, this has been centuries of continuous trauma meted out onto the African mind. But I think there's something, I think there's something that needs to be answered. Trauma. What was lost in the psychology? Like before, before we came to have these systems, how would you answer that? What was lost in, psycho- in the psychology of black people before we... Because uh, if you if you come to me, right, and you tell me we built this pyramids, right? Mm. Because you keep saying we, we keep saying mm. we. I had nothing to do with building the pyramids. Sure. We had nothing to do with sure. building the pyramids. I explained to you that where I'm from, I explained I'm from Cameroon. Mm. And my people, like, I read about this, mm. that they descended from the Baladis of mm. Egypt. Yes, it's a real thing. But then I cannot say that I'm proud to be part of this because mm. th- I had nothing to do with this. Mm. So now, if I had nothing to do with this, but I'm aware, it means that perhaps if we truly did do this, maybe there's something inside that prompts us to do this. You know, um, John Henry Clark always says, history is a current event. Mm-hmm. So Agreed. when we think that history is something that happened yesterday, we then miss it because then we exclude ourselves from our history. But mm, you cannot okay. exclude yourself from your history because Phenomenal, you are yes. where t- you are where you are today because of history. I mean, apartheid shaped South Africa, right? Yeah. It's history. Now, the ills and social ills of everybody in South Africa that we are, 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 are experiencing from that Konikaslama Kalad. And then Oyako, David Horn, and Kumakas. Eh, the Sutu section, Emma Krosen, that was inbuilt by the apartheid system. And we are living it today. So okay. then that is why I'm saying history is a current and it's current. We're still a part of history we just still as much years. as. Right. So okay. just as our people built it, history is still current. And it's just a story 
of where we've been, our fall, and now we need to start rising again. Um, because you and I spoke about uh, Steve Biko. Early on, yeah. We keep yeah. referencing Steve Biko because I don't think people truly understand the power that that man had in terms of truly relating to the black so, condition. So, right now, yes. Steve Biko is touching me and you, right? Of course, yes. And he's in... Uh, he's he's a part of history, mm -hmm. but his influence is still. He, his hand is reaching out to me and you in two thousand and twenty. Uh, in twenty twenty two. Yes. So uh, that's why history is always relevant. All right. All right. Now, speaking of which, you mentioned earlier the Kingdom of Israel. How many people are part of this initiative? Your sponsors. Tell us more about that. When did it start the year? And tell us about the lifestyle, basically. Like, okay. if I join this thing, what happens to me there? Um, okay, we, 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 we started in Guatem. Guatemala. Yeah. Okay. Where is uh, that located, by the way? In the East Rand as well. All right. All right. Started in Guatem in 2018. Oh, so it's not it's not so long ago. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Um, I grew up uh, around uh, Pastor Bongani. Uh, wanted to learn how to build an organization from him. And uh, he taught me a lot of things. Uh, saw how to deal with... Um, you know, dealing with people is stressful. It's It's not easy. So I started there. And then 2018, uh, we started um, recruiting people. Right. And right. Um, yeah, we went from it. And then COVID hit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the place yeah, yeah. where uh, we used to congregate had to be closed and, and all of that. So now we are moving and uh, uh, we are moving to Tutuza. So, but essentially, um, when people come, yes, it's, 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 we deal with scriptures, we deal with history, we deal with economics, and we deal with business. So we also have KOI Electrical. Right, um, right. For actual practical skills, yes. It's a company. Because we need to start employing ourselves as black people. Wonderful, so wonderful, yeah. It's KOI, it's a holding company, basically. Okay. So we, 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 we delve into different things. So if we're going to create an, uh, an electrical company after that then it's mechanics and it's and then we start becoming self-employed as black people so that is ultimate because this is the frustration i find with churches is that just go there and we pray and you leave but then there's so many talents in the church and there's so much that the church can do but then it's just focused on one thing now how can you have unemployed people in a space where that's why it's called the kingdom where you, you cannot have it's an empire yes yes, yes. That, exactly so we want to build our own um, institutions we want to build our own businesses we want to employ ourselves um, and yeah uh, be a community uh, and, and 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 take it from there so Wonderful. Yeah, that's 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 the basic idea. So we have a teaching side whereby we teach self, we teach uh man who he is. And um then we have the practical side of now we have to conquer the world. Now we have to start taking care of our back. We have to start making money. We have to build our own um I wouldn't say industries but enterprises. Enterprises. Yeah. Okay. So now we are here. And let's say, for example, I do not ascribe to scripture. Sure. I believe in something totally different. Sure. Let's say I am a, I'm an African Muslim, mm -hmm. or I am a Buddhist. They do exist, or I am a Rastafarian, sure. or I am a staunch traditionalist, or I do not believe that there's a God. Mm. Now, don't the lines get blurred? How do you now establish your philosophy in the absence or where you know that the teaching of scripture will cause a conflict of interest. No, we do we we, we do not uh, compromise on that. Um, it's a case of if you if you don't accept it, like we, if you don't accept it, that's your prerogative. Okay. But 
the same way you will never force truth on anyone we do not expect anybody to force their truth on us so we can speak truth and we can search for truth and if one is convinced then so be it if they're not convinced then it's also fine um but on the physical level we need to work together as black people on the spiritual level if we cannot work together it's fine because spiritual things are just we will always see things differently so yeah uh, in terms of that uh, because that is the foundation um okay. the foundation is um scriptural as well as historical so and pan africanist i guess pan africanism yeah. Speaking of pan Africanism, who are your biggest inspirations? We've already spoken about Biko, mm. so let's. I think let's let's let Biko rest. Sure. I think he's been brought up a sure. little too much sure. today. If uh, you can, if you can. So you speak, you continuously make reference to pan Africanism. Mm. How would you, or who are your greatest inspirations, and how would you describe pan Africanism for yourself? How would you get the average youngster who only whose only focus is groove and I'm a piano to get into pan Africanism? I would say study the life of Marcus Garvey. Right. Um study study the life of Marcus Garvey. Um he showed when it was not popular that uh black people can build empires. Um and obviously the black disease came and he was betrayed by black people. W. E. Du Bois and Du Bois, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh so Okay, that's another problem with us black people. Like, as you said, when we started, ultimately we are also to blame for for the situation we find ourselves in. Uh, but yeah, uh, Marcus Garvey, Robert Sobukwe, Petrus Lumumba as well, um, and Kwame Nkrumah, <laughs> and Thomas Sankara. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, those, those, those. I, I feel even Thomas Sankara, what he did in uh, Burkina Faso was. He revolutionized the entire country. So yeah, that's yeah. what. If you think of Marcus Garvey and uh, Thomas Sankara, then you understand what I'm trying to do with uh, KOI. He knows what he's talking about. He's 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 got he's got the <laughs> the blueprint to the African liberation. Yes, he's he's a boffin. But now when we move forward, right? How do you convince the average youngster that listening to Marcus Garvey or reading of, of what Thomas Sankara mm-hmm. is more beneficial than living in the moment or enjoying your youth? Because Abantabatala always say clever patal. <laughs> hmm, okay. And you hear that, ne? But you we, we don't hear that. Because as you grow, then you're like, ah oh, flip man, I've wasted so much time what happened to, to, to and now you've got addictions, now you've got uh multiple kids and now life is just it's 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 now now you cannot even focus on purpose. Because when you have purpose then you have an anchor to life, you see. Right, right, so right. basically when when I say study these things, I I'm saying find purpose because okay. there's no purpose in proof. Uh you'll be thirty years <laughs> <or 30 year. laughs> there is none. Oh but because now now we're looking at groove, okay? Mm. And just to wrap it up, how would you tell the average youngster that there's no purpose in groove? Because I just want to go and party. Okay, I want to enjoy yeah, Yeah, no, but uh, that, that, that's that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Look yeah. we have to be responsible. That's that's right. basically what I'm saying. We we have to be responsible. Because these African countries that today South Africa looks down on, they were once like us. Uh, they had just gotten their uh, democracy and um, they too were focused on groove. Uh, Zimbabwe used to be the breadbasket of uh, Africa. Rhodesia, when it was still known Today, as Rhodesia, yes. Yes. because they, 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 they neglected nation building, they neglected taking responsibility for their own nation and just said the government, the government, the government. Today they need to be refugees in all countries of the world. Uh, Congo, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, all these countries, in the 60s they got their uh, their their freedom. Right. And today look at them. So we cannot always blame government. We need to take responsibility as well. Now if as a youth we all going to say, 
then Xasa, we must not complain when South Africa is the way it is. This has been an enlightening conversation. I must say that I truly enjoyed myself. And just before we let you go, John. there's a ritual we have here. Remember, mm. we are sponsored by Dublap. Mm. And there's our our founder, okay? Our boss, Boss T. Boss T. Has this one rule we all follow. John. Okay, we believe in forgetting the status quo. Mm. So now, we want you to forget the status quo. I hear a very reliable source tells me that you cannot dance to save your ah, life. Ah, come on, no, man. No. <laughs> it's about, you, it's have, about. you don't have, in fact, you don't even have two left feet. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you don't even have two left feet. I hear from another reliable source that you are a cripple. <laughs> so this is your chance to prove that person, Yo. <laughs> to prove that person wrong. Ah, my <laughs> the stage is set, my brother. The stage is set. We, we have to do this. Uh, no beat, no nothing. Uh, you you see, God. if you had a beat, I'm telling you, I no, was okay, going to go down. Listen, we are, we are beating the status quo, okay? Who says we need a beat to dance? It is it is in us. Just as you mentioned, we are Africans. What's Yes. I I <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they lied to you. That was you, beautiful. Uh, that they was lied beautiful. to you. You see your sauces. Uh, yes. No. Michael <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> eat your heart out. <laughs> Uncle Vinny, eat your heart out. <laughs> so, this was a phenomenal edition of It's a Mess. And from me, Simon Ubisi, you can catch me before we wrap it up. We, you can catch me. I only have one source, or rather one profile, or rather whatever you want to call it. Yes, I am on Facebook. Simon Nubisi. I am the king of the ghetto. You just type Simo, S-I-M-O, space N-O-U-B-I-S-S-I. Where can we find you, my brother? Uh, Twitter, uh, yes. the Kingdom of Israel, one, and uh, as well as hey, Facebook. Hey, you see, now we are afraid to see Facebook. <laughs> as well as Facebook. But yeah, uh, you must teach us, man, these things. Uh, yeah, as you believe, as you believe. Okay. Oh, I'm gay, gay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's been, it's been, it's been a blast. And uh, thanks to my buddy, um, Tabang, the king of Tablap. Yes, uh, the king. Shout out, my man, the king. So this has been a phenomenal edition from us right here at Amped Studios, sponsored by Old Mutual and Tablap. This has been a wonderful production of It's a Mess from me, Simon Ubisi, and Rianetis Kabat. Rianetis Kabat. Let's get messy.